This is the case of Paul Quant Sr., a 78-year-old disabled veteran who was subjected to a brutal and agonizing death at the hands of the last person he would suspect. Blues Creek in northwest Gainesville, Florida, seemed like a safe place for Paul Quant Sr. to settle down. He lived there for many years, and he seemed to be living a quiet and cheerful life. He was described by many who knew him as a kind-hearted gentleman who always saw the best in people, no matter who they were. On the night of January the 9th, 2012, however, the idyllic vision of his safe neighborhood was shattered when the 78-year-old disabled Navy veteran became the victim of a violent home invasion. The investigators described the scene as nothing short of horrific. There was blood all over the carpet. Quant Senior was left bruised and bloodied, but he managed to get to the home of his neighbor, Virginia Grisson, to beg for help. Bear in mind, during this phone call to 911, Paul is slowly bleeding to death and is in an indescribable amount of pain. And it's remarkable to see that he still had the courage and bravery to go out and find help. 
who claimed he had no knowledge on the incident. They took him to an interrogation room for a formal interview. Can you tell me about Miranda? She's been my girlfriend for about six years. Do you know where she's at right now? Uh, as far as I know, she was at work. You know a guy by the name of Austin? He's Miranda's cousin. He's in jail. Or he's at the hospital. He's fixing to go to jail. All, all I can tell you about Austin is that I know he has been in trouble a few times. But other than that, I, I don't really know Austin. Was the last time we heard from Miranda? It was 2.54 a.m. She told me she was at her work, like in her patient had fell asleep. And that was really, I mean, I just told her I was watching a movie. What time was Miranda supposed to get off work? She told me 8.8. 8, 8. Well, we don't want you caught up in something that you shouldn't be caught up in. Uh, because what we're investigating is very serious crime. Attempted murder. Home invasion robbery. Uh, a lot of bad stuff. We really had a character for her to do anything like what you're talking about. I mean, I've been married for six years and she hasn't done anything against the law other than traffic citations. It's possible she's not involved in this. Yeah, I know. Like I said, I you don't... know, it's possible our information has led us to her. And when we finally reach her, we'll find that she wasn't at all who we were looking to speak with. Well, if you will, hang tight. And uh, we're going to meet with the sergeant and make sure he's good with everything. Listen, dude, I, I know I don't know what you told them and all this kind of stuff and everything, but um, I don't think you're being straight up. I find it hard to believe that uh, she's been your girlfriend for several years and, and you don't you don't know anything. I mean, what are you asking me if I think that my girlfriend I think that she asked me about it. She, she mentioned it in front of you. She it to me. I'm just as shocked as you are to find out that you guys are knocking on my door whatever time. Asked me if my girlfriend's committed attempted murder. Well, she had to go to work, is what she told me. We just talked to her the manager. She said she's not working today, not at all. Why is she lying now about going to work? Your guess is as good as mine. At first, the detectives were adamant that Chad knew what his girlfriend did and was trying his best to cover for her. However, the more they interviewed him and the more they analyzed his movement and body language, the more they realized that he was actually telling the truth and was indeed unaware about his girlfriend's despicable plans. Call her, put her on speaker, say, hey, what's up? Are you coming home? What's the plan? And then we'll just uh, go. go from there, see what happens. The mailbox is full and cannot accept. I don't think she's going to pick up. If Miranda was in trouble, if she couldn't come home to you, What's her name? Kathy Martin. The detectives decided to visit Miranda's mother's house in Fort White in order to question her about her daughter's whereabouts, where they surprisingly found Miranda there, hiding out in one of the rooms. Both Miranda and her mother, Kathy Jones Martin, were brought in for questioning. They were placed in two different rooms and questioned simultaneously. The detectives' main aim is to establish a timeline and trap them into a story. If any of their accounts differ from one another, it would be a huge step in the case against them. Tell me about your day yesterday. I left my apartment. It was around 11, 12. And I went out to my mom's. Yesterday, between daylight and dark, Austin asked Rand if he could give me a ride. Okay. To his lady friend. I met up with some chick, and that's the last I've seen him. Gave Austin a ride to work. It was a parking lot off of, I don't know if it was 13th or 440 White. I just dropped him off and left. Okay, when you dropped him off and left, I mean, where'd you go? Dad thought I had to work, so I had to go back and pretend like I was getting my work clothes. Why, why are you lying to Chad? I lied to him last night because I just wanted to spend a night like with my mom and everything. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want him to get mad, so I told him I was working. In the short time she was interviewed, Miranda has already admitted to willingly lying to her boyfriend about her whereabouts. It's clear to see that this is a sign of her true nature beginning to show. Somebody who is willing to deceive and fabricate the truth in order to receive what she wants. Okay, so you drop. Austin, Austin, and drove back to your mom's. Yes. 
So what time do you think you get to your mom's? It was like 10. Okay, so she left around dusk. You made it in between 10 and 11. Okay, but it's what, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 6 hours she's gone to just drop him off. Did she say if she went anywhere else after that? Or? Uh, well, I thought she was going to work. If you can think of anything, I would much rather lay everything on the table. You know, I don't know. Maybe everything that you've told us is what you know. I don't know. But I'm just, I just like to let people know that from the very beginning. You were in Fort White at 10 o'clock. Mm -hmm. uh, I take it that you had your phone with you. Mm -hmm. The detectives believe that she was in Gainesville, where Paul Quant resided, on Monday, January 9th. However, both Miranda and her mother are adamant that she was in Fort White that night, 32 miles away from Gainesville, because Miranda wanted to spend the night with her mother. The detectives need to first of all prove that this is not true if they want to build a case against her. If your signal was bouncing off the tower towards Gainesville at 11 o'clock, would that surprise you? Yeah, it would night. surprise me. There is a reason we want you to be able to explain it now before... Okay, because I thought my boyfriend was cheating on me, okay? So I drove back just to see if his car was in the parking lot. You drove by where? My and you got back to Gainesville at what time now? It was around like 1 or 1 30. And just like that, the detectives got what they wanted. Miranda changed her story and said she went back to Gainesville to check up on her boyfriend, placing herself in the area at the time the crime occurred. We have some reservations about where your daughter was last night. Please be honest. She spent the night at my house last night. She made it in between 10 and 11. She rented the movie Paul, and we watched that. Miranda's mother, however, continued to stick to the story, pleading that her and her daughter were together the whole night. This is most likely a story they rehearsed many times before this interview. Frustrated, the detectives decided to conclude the interrogation, as it was clear it wasn't going anywhere. How many times total do you think you worked for, for Paul? Well, it was three days a week. At least once a week, I guess, you'd, you'd make his bed. Yes. Okay. The bed sheets, everything that took off the bed, put in the washer, and then put back on the bed. So you never got anything off the closets? The only time I ever on the closet was just I hang up stuff and that's it. Okay, so you saw the safe there? Oh, I didn't think that was like a safe safe or anything. What do you think it was? I thought it was just like a box, saying like a metal box. Be honest with me. What was the reason for bringing him over here? And be honest. He was supposed to meet with some girl. I dropped him off. You dropped Austin off just down the road from Paul's house, right? Miranda, be honest with me. You dropped him off just down the road from Paul's house, right? Yes. Okay. Meeting some girl, and that's that. That's honestly it. And Miranda, I know we've been talking a long time to Detective Joe Mayo. Every time we come outside, there's a little bit more information that you've disclosed. And that's why we keep coming back in here and asking you some more questions, okay? Because nothing seems to be adding up. When you guys went there last night, okay? And when you guys drove up there, you know, whatever you planned to do, did you expect it to unfold the way it unfolded? Did you expect Austin to act like that? Miranda, this is important. Things changed, right? Things changed, right? Yes. I thought you were just gonna just scare him, just not her, just scare him. Finally, an admission that she did indeed drop Austin off at Paul's house with the intent to make contact with Paul and not for Austin to see a girl. At this point, both the detectives and Miranda know there's no turning back from this. The truth is almost out. What, were, what was Austin's new plan now? I, know, I guess he just wanted everything. I haven't seen everything that he's got, so you tell me what everything is. What does he want from Mr. Paul? I didn't care about what he got or anything. Like, I didn't even want Austin to go in the first place. But he did go, and you knew he was going there to scare him. Brenda, did you, did he tell you to wait for him? I waited for him down the street where there was like a house for rent. It must have been hell waiting 
did you ever go in the house just to see what was going on to get him? Did you try to stop him? I was only at like past the doorstep for a little while and I just, I just, I froze. Okay. She has now admitted that she was in Paul Quant's residence at the same time as Austin. However, she's trying her best to distance herself from the brutality of the crime that occurred by only showing peripheral complicity in the crime. In order to charge her for her involvement, the detectives need more admissions from Miranda. You're just standing there, right? Were you in shock? Did you hear Mr. Paul yell for help? I couldn't hear anything. It was... Miranda, what was he saying? I was just, I honestly, I just couldn't hear anything. Uh, what time last night did you go over to Mr. Paul's house? Between 9.30 and 10. Between 9.30 and 10. And who went? Austin went first, and then it followed. Austin rang the doorbell, and the next thing you know, he just pushes it open. Did Mr. Paul see you? I don't think he had a chance after Austin just pushed him. Do you follow him into the, uh, you follow Austin in? Yes, so I was standing like at the edge. He was like, so down that time, he put this off. You threw the mask that you told you to put it on? Yes, sir. What color was the mask? It was it was a red Elmo. You had a pin number? Okay, so he got Mr. Paul's pin number? For the sake. Okay. So did Austin tie him up? Yes. Is he begging for his life? He just kept saying, I'll give you everything you want. Please stop. Oh, that hurt. And what was Austin hitting him with? It looked like his fist. His fist? And did you see Mr. Paul bleeding? Yes? Okay. I didn't know if Austin was about to do something to me next. Okay. You know that Austin's hitting him, correct? Yes. Okay. And you're saying Austin's collecting everything in the house to take it. So what did Austin take? I seen him with a box of stuff. With a box of stuff? No, it was always in the box. Any chance that maybe did you collect anything in the house? Did you take anything? Austin oh, just kept telling me, take it, take it. And where did you put that stuff? In the trunk of his car. Did you drive the Cadillac out of the garage? Yes, he made me drive to the bank. You guys drove to the bank to use a debit card at the banks? Yes. What bank did you go to? Capital something. Did you go to an ATM machine? Can we get some video from that ATM? Is it going to be you? Yes. How much money did you take out? Four. So you took out 400? Okay. Where'd you go next? We should have banked on Newberry, but it had exceeded. Oh, exceeded limit. But that was you too. I mean, if we pull the bank no, records. It's me. It's you. What are you feeling right now, Miranda? I are the you, are you person in the whole entire world, and I let something bad happen to somebody that didn't deserve it. And I should have stopped it. After the interview was concluded, it was obvious to the detectives that she was involved in the crime just as much as Austin was. Even though she tried to paint a picture that she was a victim in this and that she was being forced by her cousin Austin the whole time. All this was later confirmed to be true when detectives searched the car where they found her journal. What they read highlighted the dark and evil nature of Miranda Martin and really destructed the facade she had put up of a scared individual who was being controlled and manipulated. In fact, she was the one who was manipulating everyone, and after reading her journal, it was clear to see the length she went to to execute her plan. The journal read, I should have looked through the drawers, got to get information on the location of the key, get back in and set up entrance. Also make sure I set up a stepping system to boost myself up high enough. I want to do it really, really soon, but might have to wait a few months, thinking maybe sometime in December before Christmas. The detectives also found a key to Mr. Quant's house in the car. The key seemed to be an older one because sometime during the planning of this robbery, Paul Quant became concerned when he couldn't find the spare key to his house, forcing him to change the locks to his front door. The investigators believe that Miranda was indeed the mastermind behind this brutal murder and her cousin Austin was the brute force she needed to carry out her plan. Both Miranda Martin and Austin Jones were charged with attempted first-degree murder and conspiracy to commit home invasion robbery.